Over the decades, many characters have taken up the mantle of Robin and assisted the Dark Knight in his fight against crime in Gotham. But of them all, Tim Drake is probably the most unique, and for several reasons. Unlike most other characters in the Batman universe, he is motivated not by a tragic past or traumatic personal losses, but by an inherent drive to do what is right. And unlike other Robins, Tim Drake is very similar to Batman, almost to the point of seeming like his most natural successor. Given Gotham Knight's central premise, which claims that the Batman is dead and that a team of his former wards is left to pick up the pieces and continue his fight against crime in his absence, it makes sense why WB Games decided to include Tim Drake as one of the game's four main playable characters. Ahead of the open world action RPG's launch in October, later this year, we've been looking individually at each of the game's main characters one by one, and here we'll be talking about the game's version of The Boy Wonder. I'm sorry, Bruce, but it's the only way. I know, Tim. I'll stop, Scarecrow. Master Bruce, I'm reading multiple militia forces converging at your location. It's the Arkham Knight. He's found you. I'll take care of it, Alfred. Interestingly, even though a personal traumatic loss isn't the central impetus for Tim's crime-fighting activities, his earliest association with the Batman is still tied to a tragic incident. Dick Grayson, once a member of an acrobat family that performs in the circus, loses his parents before a performance in a deadly attack, for which Bruce Wayne himself is also present as a witness. That is what ultimately leads to him being taken in as Bruce's adoptive son and eventually becoming Robin, and later Nightwing. But the incident is Tim's earliest interaction with the two as well, because that's where he first meets both Bruce and Dick. Get off me! You think I'm scared of you, Robin? The infected. Where are they? They're not infected. They're Joker. Harley's got them, and they ain't leaving this place until you're a corpse. How did she find us? How did she get in? I'd let him know if I were you. He's not always in such a good mood. One of Tim's greatest abilities is his impressive intellect and his excellent deduction reasoning, which helps him eventually become a detective on par with Batman himself. Sometime after the circus incident, it's that sharp brain and his keen powers of observation that help him figure out the true identities of the crime-fighting duo that protects Gotham City. And once he figures out that Bruce Wayne is Batman and Dick Grayson is Robin, he begins following their exploits closely. Years later, after Jason Todd's death, Tim realizes that Batman is becoming increasingly reckless and violent, following which he tries to pursue Dick Grayson, who has become Nightwing by that point, into going back to Bruce Wayne. According to Tim, Batman needs a Robin to keep him on track and in check, that combined with the fact that Dick refuses to take up the Robin mantle again. This leads to Tim deciding to do what's needed himself. One thing leads to another, and eventually, Bruce allows Tim Drake to become the third Robin. Of course, that comes with extreme training, and the new Robin does become extremely capable in more ways than one. From stealthy tactics and hand-to-hand -hand combat to using a variety of gadgets, which are all the way you'd expect a hero in the Bat family to be a cut above the others. In spite of all this, Tim's greatest asset remains his intellect and his detective skills, which in more ways than one makes him more like the Dark Knight than any of the previous Robins. From a gameplay perspective, there's still plenty that we don't know about how Robin is going to play, especially compared to the other three characters, who have had substantial showings and reveals in the lead-up to the game's launch. But of course, we're hoping to learn more in the coming weeks and months. Something else that sets him apart from Dick Grayson and Jason Todd is the fact that, as mentioned previously, he isn't motivated by a personal loss or the need for revenge or anything along those lines. Not too long after he takes up the ramen mantle, Tim gets a bitter taste of collateral damage when his parents get captured by a certain villain known as the Obi-Man, that in turn leads to the death of Tim's mother, while his father is paralyzed and put into a coma. Still, in his early teens at this point, Bruce Wayne is worried that Tim won't react to the incident very well and might end up losing himself to his need for vengeance, the same way that Jason Todd did. But more than anything else, his personal loss drives the new Robin to do 
what's right more than ever? All four of Gotham Knight's main playable characters are doing what they're doing for different reasons. But they are driven first and foremost by the apparent death of Bruce Wayne. With Tim Drake, however, it'll be interesting to see how he responds to the situation, because if his characterization is true to the source material, we'll end up seeing a character who is fighting against the criminal underbelly of Gotham not because he feels he owes it to the dead Batman the way his companions might, but because he feels that now more than ever, rooting out the decay and corruption at the heart of the city is the right thing to do. At the same time, it might also be interesting to see someone like Obi-Man come into the story at some point and see how Tim reacts to his presence. Bringing a specific villain in that challenges Tim and his views on a personal fundamental level could be a great way to develop his character convincingly and advance his personal arc. Tim Drake's relationship and dynamic with the other three members of the Bat Family should also make for some interesting narrative threads in the game. We've already touched on the relationships with Dick Grayson, and it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic between the two characters is portrayed in the game. Dick and Tim have often been closely associated in DC Comics over the years, and Gotham Knight's portrayal of the particular relationship should be quite intriguing, in an ideal scenario at the very least. When Gotham Knight's story kicks off, Tim is the youngest ever Robin, and as the original Robin, Dick Grayson might end up becoming something of a mentor to him throughout the course of the game. Just as interesting, if not more so, will be the dynamic between Tim and Jason Todd. From their temperaments to their relationships with Bruce Wayne, both characters are quite often diametrically opposed from one another. The two have, meanwhile, also locked horns with one another on a few occasions over the years. Is that something that we'll see in Gotham Knights as well? It would certainly make for some interesting drama, so we wouldn't be against it. Of course, Tim's own personal arc, irrespective of the character surrounding him, is something else we're intrigued by. He's often been positioned as Batman's natural successor, and that may very well end up being a crucial part of the arc in Gotham Knights. Whether or not we see him become Red Robin by the time the game comes to an end remains to be seen, but we're still excited to see where his story goes and where it ultimately ends up. Did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.